good Friday morning, a feel-good football Friday, and a lot of news about DeMar Hamlin yesterday and the NFL and how they're going to handle the next couple of weeks and into the playoffs. And, of course, spectacular news surrounding the DeMar Hamlin recovery. He was awake. He was writing answers to questions. The doctors believe that he's going to make a full neurological recovery. So all amazing things. You saw a press conference from the Buffalo Bills yesterday with Sean McDermott and Josh Allen and said the good news that they heard about DeMar Hamlin yesterday has got them all inspired and ready to go and play this weekend. And the NFL is going to have a vote with the owners today after the commissioner came up with a plan on how to handle the competitive balance of this. And then the competition committee said, okay, now the owners have to go and, I guess, ratify it, if you will. Yeah. And we'll see what happens from there. Boomer was a big celebrity last night, too. We'll get to that a little bit later as he was courtside at Rutgers, Maryland. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Ah, Good morning, Jay. A little tired this morning. You know, I've been trekked down to Piscataway, but it yeah. was fun. And uh, what a great venue that is. I can understand why uh, other teams do not like playing in that place because it is intense. It is loud. We'll get into it with Jerry a little bit later on. I just want to say, I hadn't been to a college basketball game in, in person probably in about two or three years. Yeah. I, I, you, you forget just how intense these, these kids are and, and how so, there's so much energy, and they actually play defense. And I think Steve Peichel is, you know, he's in a defensive posture the whole game, just so you know it. It's like cell block defense over there. Huh. You know, it's like, ah. But anyway, it was uh, unfortunate we lost, but, you know, what a great experience. And it was very nice that uh, Marco Battaglia and everybody over there rolled out the red carpet for me and my buddy Lee, and we had a great night. Unfortunately, we lost. Mm. Yeah, there you go. So it was, uh, we had fun. We had a lot of fun. It was great. So, and Marco spent the whole night on his phone. So I don't know what the hell <laughs> you know, So I tried to sit there and watch this, and uh, it, was, it was a good time. So anyway, uh, saying all of that, yes, I was, uh, you know, went on Fox News yesterday with uh, Bill Hammer and Dana Perino. And right as I'm going on, the news comes out that DeMar Hamlin is actually awake and he's neurologically intact, which is the one thing we all wondered about how much oxygen did not make it to the brain. How long did it take them to revive him on the field and everything else? And it turns out that everything that happened on the field was amazing that they did what they were supposed to do, that they're trained to do. And they jumped into action. And I'm sure we'll find out who all those people are eventually. Um, but I have to say that, uh, the way that that whole thing worked out and being able to go on TV yesterday and talk about it after we were talking about it all morning and then having that be something that came to light was just really an amazing feeling. I, I don't know how you felt. I don't, I, I'm assuming that we all felt the same way. Oh, of course. Right? I mean, we, we had been waiting. So the, the sort of the take that I had going into yesterday was this was going to be a very long process because that's what it sounded like, that there was going to be – maybe weeks of him recovering, we wouldn't get some news, and who knows how long it would take. And then this this press release by the Bills, and they tweet out this all this great news. It was, like, unbelievable to go from where we were Tuesday morning to now Thursday afternoon yeah. with this spectacular news was just, it felt like a miracle. I mean, it yeah. really did feel like a miracle. Well, you know, he is, what, 24, 25 years old, so he has youth on his side. Plus, he's a professional athlete. Yeah. Uh, he's got all of that. He's probably in – well, he has to be in aw awesome sure, yeah. shape. So he had all of that going for him. Plus, he had great doctors, uh, great EMTs, and all the all the personnel there uh, that were at the game and everything else. So uh, it was great. And then he actually told uh, his uh, – as Josh Allen said yes, yesterday, charge ahead, guys. You know, go for it. And, uh, and, I, and I would feel that he would feel that way because when he first woke up, he said, did we win? Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is, which is what any athlete would be doing. And uh, I know that uh, DeMar's father had zoomed into a Buffalo Bill meeting the day before yeah. and was talking about the progress that his son was making. And I think that, um, you know, the father, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, was probably telling the team, you can do this for him. You know, that kind of thing. To kind of get those guys in a mindset where they want to play again. And I think everybody feels really good about that news yesterday. And he does have a long way to go. He's got a – his heart's got to heal – his lungs got to heal. He's got to get over the trauma of everything else. And uh, so, uh, and then on top of that, imagine telling him, you know, what has gone on around his charity. Oh, I'm since sure. He's been out. Um, so I, I mean, sure. all of this stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm sure he's going to be absolutely floored by. You know, it's amazing to me that you can be in that situation where you have to be resuscitated. Then you're in a medically induced coma. 
you're basically asleep for days. And then when you come out of it, your brain is still there to go, did we win the game? Well, it's just, it's just amazing. Well, it goes to, to show you that the initial uh, treatment that he received was spot on. Right. And the CPR that he got and to be able to be resuscitated that quickly and come back to life uh, is really remarkable. And that's it. But, but that, then again, as all people out there that are, are part of the that group of people that save lives every single day understand that, you know, that's their job. That's what they do. That's that's what they're trained to do. And they do it with uh, I'm sure there's some nervousness like we would have if I stepped on the field or you on the softball field. There's nervousness. And when you're in the batter's box, you know, you have that little tingle in your stomach. Like, sure. am I going to get a hit or is Boomer going to yell at me? That's of course. Yes. And so uh, but I'm sure the uh, the people that do that for a living have that little bit of excitement and anxiety that go along and stress that go along with that. But they see things clearly like great football players do. So anyway, I just, uh, it was really great to be able to be a part of that when the news broke yesterday. And it's just, it was just amazing. Cause I know we had just gotten off the air when that had come out. Right. And I know he's not completely out of the woods no, yet, but every time, yeah. right. Everybody believes that he's going to make this full recovery, but who was your buddy who did the Kurt Warner movie? Uh, Mark Charty. All right. Mark Charty. Get on this one. Get on this one. Get on this one. Because yes. they're already writing the script for you. It's right because, there in front of you. Because when he asked, did we win the game, the doctor said, yes, Damar, you won the game of life. I mean, that's right there in the trailer of the movie. That says Disney. Right. Right, exactly. Now, the only thing that has to happen, though, from here to there is the Bills have to win, win the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. And they got to present him with the Vince Lombardi trophy. That's right. Yeah, that would be amazing. That so, would be that would be the story. It would be great. So now there are some things that. Uh, you know, what's that, Eddie? Uh, this is a clear indication of you know sports gods. And sports the whole gods. Thing. It is a clear indication of sports the gods. The Yankees won the two thousand one World Series. Oh wait, a minute. oh yeah, they that's lost right. that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but um, you know, thanks for sending us off into a different direction there, Eddie. Appreciate that. Uh, there are a number of scenarios that the NFL has put into place right now that if certain things happen this weekend, you know depending on what the matchups are in the AFC side of things in the playoffs, uh, there could be a coin flip between two teams. That's right, between be the, the Bengals and, and the, the Ravens, Bengals, yeah. Which I, I, I'm being told like the Ravens were a little bit of a pain in the ass in this whole thing. Oh, like really? A little bit meaning of an, meaning you know, what? Like, just like pushing back on different things and different situations about competitive fairness. That's all. Not, not about DeMar, not about any of that. They're very understanding about that, but just this whole – scenario stuff that had to be run past the competition committee had to be run past the ownership and stuff like that. You know, the Ravens have already beaten the Bengals. The Bengals could have lost on Monday night, meaning that the Ravens and the Bengals potentially could have been playing for the AFC North. The the Ravens don't want to give up the AFC North. So if the Ravens go in there and beat the Bengals, there's a a very good chance that if they see each other in the playoffs, depending on what the seedings are, they could flip a coin. For a home field. For a home field for that game. Now, but when you now, say the Ravens are a pain in the ass, is that John Harbaugh? Is that Steve Bishotti? It's is the, that... whole the whole organization. The whole organization. organization. You know, it's just, it's, it's just, you know, the coach wants to, you know, make sure that his team gets. Look, yeah, at the end of the day, these are highly competitive people. Yeah. I mean, they are grinders. You know, we, we talk about these jobs and Black Monday and people getting fired like it's nothing because we sit here in this studio and we have to give opinions. But in their world, it's super, super competitive. And they want, you know, they don't want to be held back no matter what the situation is. You know, ultimately, when everything is okay, like now everybody feels like tomorrow is going to be okay. Now we're back to being, okay, we are the competitive SOBs that we were when we got this job in the first place. And one of the reasons I have it, and I continue to have it, when I speak in terms of the Baltimore Ravens, it's like John Harbaugh. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for my team now. It's no longer now that the league is bigger than the team. Now the team is all about me protecting my players and giving us the best chance to win that game. And I want to make sure that our thoughts and our rights are upheld when you are making decisions that could happen under certain scenarios. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. And because the game was officially canceled yesterday, the Bills-Bengals game will never resume uh, the Bengals won the AFC North because of that, essentially. Well, essentially. Now, if they if they lose to the uh, uh, Ravens, and there's a certain situation where these two teams can end up playing each other in the first round of the playoffs, then they'll flip a coin. Right. But the Bengals are going to have a home playoff game in round one unless 
Could it's they the meet? Ravens, but could the they meet in the first round? I, I believe they can. Yes. So, so that's the scenario. Mm. Do you want me to read you the scenarios? Uh, I, I There's don't, three of them. I mean, it's, it's very complicated. I don't know. Should we do this? Should we well, at least put some NFL music underneath it or not, something? Look, like just, some very, sort of it's, anything? It's, it's, it's very easy. Buffalo and Kansas City yeah. both win their games. Yeah. And if Buffalo and Kansas City make it to the championship game, okay, it's going to be at a neutral site. Neutral site. If Buffalo and Kansas City make it to the championship game, it's a neutral site game. Right. So and we don't know where that would be. Yet. I would think it's. I would think you'd want to keep it in this. Hello. Okay, Eddie. Yeah. Man, Eddie, you're off to a great start today. <laughs> so anyway, I would assume, yeah. again, that if it's Buffalo and Kansas City and it's a neutral site game, that you would l- want to keep the game in the same type of weather pattern. In other words, outdoors and cold. Right? Okay, so, so you're you saying would, you're knocking out the domes then? I, I would think so. I would think you're thinking Cleveland. You're thinking, you're thinking Green Bay. You're thinking Chicago. That's what I would think. Okay. But I don't know. I don't know. I, it's just, See, I, I thought it would be more like like Houston or, or Detroit, Detroit or something between, like that. No, I, I'm, why would you put two teams that play outside be, indoors? Because those, I, I think that you eliminate all sorts of weather situations. So you don't have to figure out about okay, that. So that's another. That's a whole other set of circumstances. Yeah. All right. So that. So scenario two. Scenario two. Buffalo and Kansas City both lose this weekend. Mm-hmm. Baltimore wins or ties. That means they beat Cincinnati. Yeah. A Buffalo versus Kansas City championship game would, again, then be at a neutral site. Okay. Okay. Now, there's another third scenario. Buffalo and Kansas City both lose their this weekend's games, and Cincinnati wins. All right. A Buffalo or Cincinnati versus Kansas City championship game would be at a neutral site. So basically what they're saying is that if Buffalo or Cincinnati make it to the AFC championship game versus Kansas City, it's going to be at a neutral site. Now, do you feel like this competitive balance because of the taking the home game out of it is fair when you still have that other layer of a team getting a bye? So here's my my point. My point is like, look, I said this yesterday. I said it on Tuesday when we came in here after Monday night. The NFL is in uncharted waters. And when you're in uncharted waters, you all have to be sensitive to why the NFL is making decisions, why the commissioner is making decisions. And believe you me, he's talking to the competition committee. Yeah. He's talking to the owners. And he got approval from the competition right. committee on this already. And he's trying to figure all this stuff out with without interrupting, first and foremost, week 18. And then secondly, the the playoffs and how they're going to be played out. They don't want to move or take up that extra week. They don't want to do any of that stuff, all the stuff that we possibly talked about. Now, here's the Baltimore-Cincinnati situation. All right. If Baltimore defeats Cincinnati in uh, this Sunday at 1 o'clock, so Baltimore and Cincinnati are playing at 1, Buffalo and New England are playing at 1. All right? That means Baltimore will have defeated Cincinnati, a divisional opponent, twice in one season. Yeah but still would not be able to host a playoff game because Cincinnati will have a higher winning percentage. Remember I told you they were going to go back to winning That's percentage? Right. Mm-hmm. So, thank you. So, they only played a 16-game schedule as opposed to Baltimore, who played a 17-game schedule. So, if Baltimore does defeat Cincinnati, mm. and if those two clubs are scheduled to play a wild-card game against one another, the site for that game would be determined by the coin toss. Okay. I that, think that's I, basically I think I, that, that's right. four scenarios that you have there, and I think it's relatively fair. You know, the other thing I was thinking, like if Kansas City loses on Saturday, I mean, now you're now I think I kind of feel, and I'm I'm try, I was trying to think through this. If Kansas City loses on Saturday, then you have a potential for Buffalo or Cincinnati to be the one seed, assuming if one of those teams win. I think it's just Buffalo, though, right? Not Cincinnati. I thought Buffalo had the opportunity to win, and then they would host. They would have home field. I well, don't well, think. I'm just saying, but what happens if Buffalo and Kansas City both lose and Cincinnati wins? Yeah, I don't know. That one, I'm not sure. Right. So I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't feel, I don't know. It's just that's the one thing that I don't know. But I just so like they put these scenarios out here. I think before this weekend. Just to give everybody a sense of what they're thinking and and how the competition committee, as you said, uh, ratified all this stuff. 
Um, but if Kansas City loses and Buffalo gets the number one seed, I don't think there's going to be an issue. As, as long as if Buffalo and Cincinnati both win, I think, and Kansas City loses, then I, I kind of feel like that just kind of wipes all this stuff away. Right, it, it, and, and it will. Now, I do think that the neutral site thing does make the competitive balance a little bit better, but we're still talking about a team getting a bye that might not have gotten a bye, which I know there's not going to be a panic. Which, which, Kansas- which would be Kansas City. Right. Had Buffalo won both of their last two Exactly. Games. So there's it, there's not going to be something that makes it completely fair, but this helps it You're right, but a it's, little bit. Listen, we knew, we knew on Tuesday when we did touch on some of this stuff that it was not – the people were going to have to, you know, be flexible, understand the situation at hand, the gravity of the situation, and, of course, the commissioner's powers to be able to make a decision sure. that, again, he didn't do by himself, of course. He did it with his advisors in the NFL offices. He did it with the competition committee, and he spoke to the owners. So there you have it. There are your scenarios again. Um, you know, I, I – I think it's about as best as you could expect. I really do. Uh, Al, so you were listening to what Boomer was saying, right? You weren't writing any of this down. I was not. All right, let's see if you can give us back anything that he said in that scenario situation that is correct. What did you remember that he said about these scenarios? That if the Chiefs and Bills win, there's going to be a neutral site game. If they get into the AFC championship game. Oh, okay. I see. Only, I'm only if the only if those two teams end up in the AFC oh. Championship game, and can if Kansas City wins on Saturday, okay, it basically comes down to Buffalo winning, and then if they get into a championship game, it's a, a neutral site game between those two teams. Now, there was two other scenarios in there. Do you remember those at all? If uh, well, I know the Ravens are angry at competitive balance. All right, that's true. That's, that's something true, he yeah. said. Yeah. And then if the Bengals yeah. do something. Right, exactly. Then there might be a coin flip between them and the Ravens. Right, so if the, if the Ravens beat the Bengals. Right. And they, and they match up in the first round of the playoffs. Yes. Coin flip. To see who gets the home game. Right. Why wouldn't they uh, neutral site that game? Because Baltimore would have beaten Cincinnati twice in the same year, a divisional opponent. And Cincinnati would have played one less game. And Cincinnati has been basically set, told already you've won the AFC North. So, essentially, you would have a home game unless, of course, Baltimore beats you. Now, they've Got beaten it. you twice. <laughs> Got it. You still win the AFC North, but you're going to coin flip where you're going to be playing the game. <laughs> right, exactly. Thank you. All right, Boomer and Geo on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. 